In this video, we're going to look at finding the area of a triangle using the formula 1 half AB sine C. I'm going to start off by drawing a few different triangles. So that's an isosceles triangle. Let's have a right angle triangle. And let's also have a scalene triangle. So here are three different triangles. If I can find now a base and a perpendicular height, then I can find the area of each of these triangles. So there's a base and there is a perpendicular height. So we can see that these two dimensions are at right angles. That could be the height and this would be the base. So again, these two lengths are at right angles or if you like, perpendicular. We can say if that's the case, the area is going to be one half AB. So all this is saying is u times the base by the height and divide by two. So for example, if this was going to be 10 meters and this was going to be 12 meters, we can say that the area is going to be 10 times by 12 divided by two. So the area is going to give us now 60 meters squared. If we said now that this was going to be, for example, five millimeters, and this is going to be now four millimeters. Again, to find the area, we would simply do five times by four divided by two, which is going to give us now 10 millimeters squared. Let's say that this was going to be 3.72, and we could have on there centimeters. And this one right here was going to be, let's put this as 4.13 centimetres. We would simply now plug this into a calculator. So we would do now the 4.13 times by the 3.72 and then divide by 2. That's going to give us 7.68 and I'll just put this on as 7.68 and that would be centimetres squared given now to three significant figures. What we're going to look at doing now is finding the area of a triangle when we don't have a perpendicular height. So let's draw an example of this. We might be given again a scalene triangle and we might now be given an angle. Let's say this angle right here was going to be 31 degrees. We might be given this base is 7.1 meters and this length right here is going to be, for example, 9.2 meters. What we would look to do is find the area of this particular triangle where we don't have a perpendicular height. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a triangle below. So let's just draw a triangle and we can see where the formula we're going to use comes from. So this is going to be my triangle. It's not a right angle triangle. It's just any triangle we want. So what we're going to look at then is that the area of this triangle can be written as one half a b sine of c. I'm going to call this angle here c. So this now is c. The opposite side would be c. I'm going to call the base of this triangle A, and of course, if we wanted to, we could call this angle here A, and I'm going to call this side here B, and if we wanted, we could call this angle right here big B. So what I'm going to look to do is find now the area of this triangle. All I need is a base and a perpendicular height. So I can see that I've got a base here, and I could find a perpendicular height just here. That gives me a perpendicular height. What I'm going to do is go back to my trig ratios. We've got S, O and H. If we want to find the opposite length of a triangle, which is O, we do the sine of the angle multiplied by the hypotenuse. So all I want is this perpendicular height just here, which I will call the opposite. We can say that the opposite in this case is going to be now the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle, which is B multiplied by 
the sine of C. So we can say this is B sine C. Therefore, the area is going to be one half of the base, or well, the base is A, multiplied by the perpendicular height, which we've got an expression as B sine C. So that's where one half AB sine C comes from. So if I wanted to, at this particular stage, I could go ahead and find the area of this triangle. If I now just drop the perpendicular down here, I want to find this height right here, and I've got the base. Now, the height here, if I just drew a right angle, is simply going to be 9.2 sine of 31 degrees. So if I just write this up, this is going to be now here C, this is going to be B, and this is going to be A. So I can say that the area is going to be one half A B sine C. So it's one half, then we're going to have now the 7.1 multiplied now by 9.2 multiplied by the sine of the enclosed angle of 31 degrees. That will then give us the area of that triangle. So the easiest way to do it is simply consider now the enclosed angle to be the angle we're interested in, and we do one half times by either side multiplied by the sine of the enclosed angle. So let's just do one more, and then we'll go on to some questions. So, for example, now let's say I've got a triangle, and this will be a very, uh, very rough drawing. Let's say we have something like that, and we have an angle on here, and I'm going to say that this angle is going to be now not massively accurate. Let's say that's going to be 109 degrees. Let's say this is 6.1 meters. Let's say that this is going to be 11.9 meters. We can find the area by simply saying the area is going to be one half, 6.1, 11.9, sine of 109 degrees. So straight for the calculator, make sure we're in now degrees mode. Shift mode three, and we do now 0.5 or one half times by 6.1, times by the 11.9, so times 11.9, times now the sine of the angle, so sine of 109 degrees, and that will give us the area of that triangle. 34.3, uh, and that would be meters squared correct to three significant figures. So that's what we end up getting. Now, if you think about this, if I just drew a very crude diagram now, if we had something like so, let's say that this was a right angle and we have this on. What we've got is about 12 here. We've got about uh, 6 here. So if we did 6 times by 12 divided by 2, well, that's going to give me 36. Now, if we look at the answer that we've got here, we've got 30, uh, 34.1, so we can see that that is going to be a reasonable value for now the area of that particular triangle. So let's work through some questions. In question six, we're asked to find the area of each triangle, giving our answer to one decimal place where appropriate. So this one just here now, I've got six and eight, and it's a right angle triangle. So that's nice and straightforward. All we need to do is that the area is now base times by the height divided by 2, which is going to give us now on here, using the correct units, that's going to be 24 centimetres squared. Some of these problems, and let's just draw another example, some of these problems might, uh, for example, let's just put this on here. Uh, we might have the right angle just here. We might have that this length is going to be 3 this one is going to be 5. In this particular example, we could simply use Pythagoras' theorem to find the perpendicular height. We've not got the perpendicular height here, so we've got two different approaches. We could find this one using Pythagoras, which is simply 5 squared minus 3 squared square rooted, which would give me 4, 
4 times 3 over 2. Or we could do the inverse cosine of 3 fifths to get this angle and then use exactly what we've been doing. I personally use Pythagoras if it's a right angle triangle, but we have that option. So this angle right here, remember, that is the adjacent, that is the hypotenuse. So if we wanted this, we could simply go ahead and find the angle x. x would be equal to the inverse cosine now of 3 over 5. And then that would give us the, the angle. And then we'd do 1 half, 3 times 5, times a sine of whatever that is. Long way round, I wouldn't do it. Okay, let's look at the next one. Here we've got the enclosed angle and we've got the two sides. So if I want to put this on, this is going to be C. We'll say that this one is going to be A, this one is going to be B. So the area, and I'll just write it here, the area is going to be one half AB sine C. So we can say in this particular case, the area is going to be now one half. We'll have now the 3.1 multiplied by the 4.7 multiplied by the sine of 28 degrees and that will give us the area. We can do it either way around 3.1 times 4.7 or 4.7 times 3.1 it's not going to make any difference. So we've got 0.5 times by the 3.1 times by the 4.7 and then we're going to uh, now multiply that or times that by the sine of 28 degrees. None of these are drawn massively accurate it's just giving us some idea. 3.42, so 3.42 dot dot dot, therefore it's going to be to one decimal place 3.4 and that will be now kilometres squared. So nice and straightforward, nice and logical. This one just here, again we've got the enclosed angle and we've got the two sides. So let's just put this on, so this is going to be C, we can call this one A, this one B. So with this one, the area, we simply write now that the area is going to be equal to one half. We've got 0 0.87, we've got 1.07, then we've got now the sine of the angle, which is 43 degrees. Do check now that each of these is in the same unit, so that's not centimetres and that millimetres. We've got now 0.5 times by the 0.87, let's put this in, 0.87, times by the 1.07 multiplied now by the sine of the angle the sine of 43 degrees this is going to be quite a small number we end up with 0 0.317 so 0 0.317 dot 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 therefore it'll be 0 0.3 and that will be millimeters squared and that's to one decimal place Generally speaking, in an exam, you'd probably be asked for that one because the numbers are so small to three significant figures. Really doesn't matter. Okay, next one. Well, here we've got an isosceles triangle. We've got a base of 9 and a height of 13. We've got lots of different approaches that we could use with this. Um, the way I'm going I'm to do it three or four different ways. The first way that I'm going to look at it now, let's just get this up. We, uh, let's, there we go, that's what I want. The first way I'm going to look at is to find this angle right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll get a pen, I want a, a white one. Let's grab, there we go, that's what I want. I'll call this here angle X. So this is X, well this is 13, this is going to be 13, and this is going to be 9. We can use the cosine rule to find this angle. We can say, as we've seen in previous videos, cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So we can say now that X, the angle, will be equal to the inverse cosine of 13 squared plus 13 squared minus 9 squared over 2 times by 13 times by 13. See with this one we don't have a perpendicular height. We've got the slant height and a base. What I really wanted was this perpendicular height here. So if we do this what we're going to have is the fine. Let's put this in. So let's do now the inverse cosine. So inverse cosine now of 13 squared plus 13 squared. I suppose you can put 169 in minus 9 squared and then that's over now 2 times by 13 times by 13, or 2 times 13 squared. Again, entirely up to you. 
That will give us now the angle. 40.5, so we can say that x is equal to 40.5. Therefore, the area is going to be equal to 1 half a, which is 13, b, which is 13, the sine of 40.5. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we'll have is uh, 0 0.5 times by 13, or 13 squared, or times by 13, it really doesn't matter, multiplied by the sine of the answer that we've just found. And that gives us 54.9. So 54.9, and we're working in centimetres, so centimetres squared, and that now is correct to 1 dp. So that's one approach to find that. Okay, let's look at an alternative approach. Let's say now we did this particular method. Let's say that I turn this into a right angle triangle and we can do it this way. So lots of different ways, it's entirely up to you. That's 13. Now if I split this in half, that's going to be four, uh, that's going to be 4.5. So what we can say is that this length right here is going to be the square root of 13 squared minus 4.5. 5 squared. That's using Pythagoras. So if we just do that, we can do now the square root of 13 squared minus 4.5 squared. That will give us the height. Okay, that's the height. So that's that. So we can say that the area is going to be equal to now 1 half multiplied by the base, which is going to be 9, multiplied by by this answer that we've got, which is root 595 over 2. So if we did that, so let's do point, uh, 0 0.5 times by 9 times by my answer. And this should now give us exactly what we had before, which is 54.88 point, uh, 54 and so on and so forth, which we've seen. So that's another approach. Um, another approach, if you really wanted it, as you can see, there's lots of different ways that this can be done. I can think of a, a couple more. If we wanted to get this angle right here, what we could have done, let's put this on. This, uh, we'll get this angle just here. Let's call this angle Y. This is 4.5. This is 13. So what we've got here is the adjacent. We've got the hypotenuse. So using now our trig ratios we can say that the cosine of the angle, so we can say y will be equal to the inverse cosine of the adjacent, which is 4.5, over the hypotenuse. So if we do that, um, and also as well, it, as you get, uh, you might even want to use um, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. You could even do that. There's so many different ways. Shift cos of 4.5, divided by 13. So that's going to give us now that angle. So we could do now for the area. So area is equal to one half the base, which is going to be nine. Remember, we're taking the whole thing here. Nine times by 13 times by the sine of this value that we've just found, which is 60. What have we got? 69.74. So let's put that in. 69. 0.74 dot dot and so on and so forth so 0.5 times by 9 times by 13 times by the sign of the answer that i've just found and that gives us again 54.8 and so on and so forth there are other ways as well um lots of different approaches so when we've got a scenario like this all we need to do is find a perpendicular height or if you want you can find the angle and use the cosine rule it really it's entirely up to you on how you want to go about that one so being flexible will help but hopefully that's given you a nice introduction to finding the air of a triangle when we don't always have the perpendicular height essentially all we're looking to do is find this perpendicular height and a base such that we can do one half a b so there we go, introduction to the area of a triangle.